This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Roger Jelinek, host of Think Tech Bookworlds, and uh, my guest today is Richard Tillotson. Uh, he's on a member of the board of the Hawaii Book and Music Festival. He has been uh, working with the festival literally all 13 years. This is our 13th year. Uh, welcome, Richard. Oh, and, uh, thank you. Uh, he's had a really bird's eye and ground's eye view of the festival as, as it's uh, evolved. He's also uh, a real live author uh, with a couple of excellent novels. And uh, we're going to talk about this year's festival, which is just around the corner on May the 5th and 6th at Honolulu Hale. Uh, so let's go. Um, all right. All right. You start. <clears throat> Actually, I guess I want to start by saying congratulations. Wow. Um, as you just said, I have worked on the festival for all 13 of them. And uh, I have an idea of what it takes to put one on, how much work it takes all year. And uh, I really think we say each year this is the best ever. This really is, could be, in terms of content that you have put together. Uh, the best we've ever had. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, it's interesting because uh, it's doing more with less, in a sense. Um, we have some outstanding speakers, uh, keynoters from, uh, from the mainland. Uh, uh, one Pulitzer Prize, two Pulitzer Prize winners. Two Pulitzer winners, Prize winners, yes. and a National Book Award winner. And a National Book Award winner, and uh, uh, some other uh, number one New York Times best-selling uh, writers. Uh, I'll just run through them. They, they, these are the ones we feature in the Mission Auditorium, which is the mm -hmm. indoor auditorium. When we started, by the way, we never used it for that. Uh, but, but now that's the only indoor uh, uh, venue that we have, and it holds about 350 people, which is just right for major speakers. Um, the very first one on Saturday morning is, actually, is uh, Jennifer Allen, uh, who has uh, written sort of the authorized book about the Hokulea voyage, which has uh, phenomenal photography by John Bilderbach. John, John lives on the North Shore. Jennifer Allen lives in Los Angeles. She's the daughter of a famous football coach, George Allen. Uh, and they spent a great deal of time over three years writing and photographing the voyage. They'll be accompanied by Nainoa Thompson and uh, Nainoa's wife, who's Kathy Muneno, who's a, a TV uh, reporter, will do the introductions. And uh, that should be a really terrific event. That'll that be, kicks off the That'll that be program. very popular. Uh, yes. There'll probably be a line for that. I hope so, yes. Um, then we have um, uh, Bill Finnegan, uh, who, uh, William Finnegan, who... There'll be a line for him, too. Yeah, he got a Pulitzer for his Barbarian Days, which is a, a life of surfing. He's a, actually an extremely well-established, prize-winning political reporter, foreign correspondent for The New Yorker an excellent writer, but his passion is surfing, which is probably why he agreed to come. You know. uh, we have uh, Adam Johnson. And, and actually, I've, I've met Adam Johnson yeah, that's because- right. I think you introduced him. I introduced you? him yeah. uh, when he was at the festival a couple yeah. of years ago. And a, a wonderful guy. Yeah. He is he's so personable and generous in terms of answering questions. And since we had him a couple of years ago for the Orphan Master's Son, which won the Pulitzer that year, since then, he's uh, published a new book, which is a National Book Award winner, but I think he told us, or maybe he told you, that uh, people, are, especially given what's going on, yeah. is that people just keep asking him about, about North Korea. So he's willing to talk about that it's, again. It's, it's interesting. Why would you go to hear a novelist uh, talk about a political situation? But if you situation? read the book, you understand. Well, uh, I, there are things I, novelists I, know that yeah, or, exactly. or learn or can, well, can communicate that you can't get it, in... Reportage. Historians and journalists aren't allowed to report on what they think their subjects think. A novelist is perfectly free to do that. Yeah. And so you get a, a, at least a, a, an imagined world that is probably very close or as close as anyone can get to what's going on in North yeah. Korea. It's a fascinating book. Uh, we have a romance writer. We've never had one before, really, a really big-time one. Uh, Julia Quinn, who actually graduated from Harvard, so which she proudly says, just to 
yes. snub everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> she's in the Romance Writers Hall of Fame. There are only 16 of those. She sold her books in all over the world in millions of copies. New York Times number one, New York Times bestseller. Uh, she seems to put out about four books a year. Um, and uh, she's very personable. We have uh, a YA writer named uh, 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 Nicola Yoon, uh, who comes originally from Brooklyn, but now lives in Los Angeles. She's a YA novelist. Uh, her book, she wrote a book called Everything, Everything, uh, which has became a, a major motion picture last year. Uh, and uh, she's written another book called Everywhere, Everywhere. She likes those kinds of titles, <laughs> which is also being made into a major motion picture. Um, and she's quite young um, and uh, makes every other writer jealous. Yes, her sales must be. <laughs> no, uh, but she's, re she's really good. Um, so those are some. Uh, another quite different kind of program we have in the in Mission Auditorium is a play written by Moses Goods and mm -hmm. acted by Moses Goods. Uh, that looked really interesting, yes, uh, yeah. very interesting. I, I wasn't aware of that historical figure. Yes, it's a play about the Hawaiian who went back to the East Coast in order to get the missions to send people here. In something like 1807 or yes, something yes, very, very early very, on. Yes, very, very early. Uh, and uh, uh, he, so Moses was commissioned by the Mission Houses Museum to write this play. And then there'll be a panel afterwards with a couple of people who actually know a great deal about the subject. You know. So uh, that's, a, that's a good deal of the, that program. Um, we have 10 venues. Um, I'm not sure I can at this point remember Remember anything. them all? Remember them all. Uh, but we have two author venues. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they have a lot of panels this year. We're finding that panels are, work particularly well in the festival setting because they're very interactive. Yeah. Uh, we insist that at least 20 minutes of every hour is dedicated to Q&A. And, and let me talk about the venues a little bit, because um, one of the things that I make, I think makes our Hawaii Book and Music Festival different than pretty near any other that I know of is the way it occurs, the actual place and manner in which it occurs, which is on the grounds of Honolulu Hale, this beautiful park, mm -hmm. and the venues themselves, with the exception of the Mission Memorial, auditorium which is enclosed, all the others are out in the open air and there are tents uh, for shelter from the sun or, or if it should sprinkle, um, but the uh, sides are all open. So it is very, very easy to just wander about and to drop in and to have a look. Uh, you don't have to, how to, how to put it, enter a classroom and, and, yes. and make your way down between the aisles and sit down and then you're committed and after Ten minutes, you may say, "This is not my cup of tea," but it's embarrassing to get up and tiptoe out. Um, but it, it's sort of a, this festival is a is a taster's uh, dream because you may say, "Well, I perhaps someone might say I'm not that interested in Buddhism." I didn't think, but they're having this special uh, pavilion. It's all about Buddhism, and maybe I'll drop in and give it a listen. Or uh, that one was standing room only. Standing room only, and there yes. you are. There are many, many people who are fascinated yeah. by the subject. And, um, and I, uh, something new that I think will appeal to people, for, I mean, for years, we've had a wonderful emphasis on keiki. We've had wonderful uh, young uh, children's book authors and readings and events, including bouncers and uh, carnival rides mm -hmm. for the kids. Um, so we've all of this been covered off very, very well on the younger end of the spectrum, especially with Mr. Steve from PBS. <clears throat> However, in the last, I think this year and last year, HMSA has sponsored a pavilion on wellness in Hawaii, which is especially appealing to, I think, the older people in the community. And there are all kinds of topics there that... Uh, they're really hot button. That are, they're really hot button issues. Yeah, and really excellent speakers. Right. Um, and and uh, they range from uh, uh, homelessness as a medical problem uh, because of the economics of homelessness as well as the, the psychology of homelessness. Right. Uh, we have one on the opioid crisis, uh, a, a curious one that was exceptionally popular in the last two years is called Dying Well. Uh, because a lot of people are apparently really interested in dying well. And you're, are, are you having people who died well come back and tell us how <laughs> yes, to do of it? Course. <laughs>
<laughs> no, we only speak to them. No, ah, no. It's a right. table tapping. Yes. <laughs> no. Um, but actually, one of the key people in that program, who's also in a mission auditorium, uh, we were really lucky to get, is John Kabat-Zinn. John Kabat-Zinn uh, is the man who's almost single-handedly made mindfulness a worldwide oh, yes. uh, yeah. fascination. And he's, he's, um, he published a huge book on it, uh, which is now being split into four books. And, and, and um, the first one is being launched at the, at the festival. Uh, and then the others are being published through the year. But he's a particularly articulate uh, man. He started out as a, Buddhist, as a Buddhist, but he's actually not a religious person, really. Um, and and uh, we expect, uh, I've just today got a, a rather cross email from someone who said, I want to bring 400 people to hear Dr. Cabot Zinn, but I can't make head or tails of your website. <laughs> So I had to teach him how to use the website. Oh. And we should talk about the website because it is phenomenal. Oh, well, the website is, uh, is brand new this yeah. year, um, at least in its most important uh, aspect, and that is the schedule so you can find out what's happening when. And I was just looking at it this morning uh, because I, I think you're still populating it with some, yeah. some things that are just, just come in. But uh, if you go to the homepage, you'll see right up there in one of the horizontal menus, schedule, and you click on that, and the schedule will appear, and you can see it by several different uh, filters. You can see it um, by uh, a grid, which is how I prefer to look at it, because I can see all the events mm -hmm. at the same time. Or you can see it by different categories. And they're color-coded. And they're color-coded. Mm -hmm. So it's very easy to scan through and see what you're really, if there's a particular thing you're looking for. You've heard that uh, uh, this particular author, or this particular musician, or this particular Hula Halau is performing at such and such a time, you can scan through just for that. And once you've found it, if you should be on your phone, because this is mobile enabled, yeah. you can then just tap that and it will populate your calendar on your phone. Yeah. And then you can put in a reminder for yourself. And then you can also email email your itinerary to your friends or to, go, to go direct to Facebook. Or so it's a very to... powerful tool. Very powerful. I, I, we have. I, I know uh, one of the uh, things I think we're proudest of at the festival is that we have a tremendous number, number, in fact, a great proportion of our visitors now are repeat visitors. They are so fond of the event, they've come back year after year after year. And for them, this will be a new tool. And it will take a little while to figure out how best to use it. I think a lot of us will still be wedded to the print version, yes. which will which still we be are providing. I just finished still today, be available, yes. and you can, you can get it right yeah, there yeah. As, as, as soon as you come in. But uh, you can also now uh, have access to it right on your phone, and especially for people who, for whom our phones are part of ourselves. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a, a, a couple of examples of how magical it is. Uh, uh, this man who wanted to know about when was John Kabat-Zinn going to be mm -hmm. available. So I literally just put keyed in John Kabat-Zinn in one, one space, and immediately his whole, all the events that John Kabat-Zinn is in appeared. And I could check each one off, and then oh, that's brilliant. then create an itinerary for myself, so mm -hmm. I would know exactly when he was. And you where can he was. stalk him yes, about I the grounds, yeah. him, yes. <laughs> no. And then I emailed it to the man. Uh huh. No. Oh, excellent. Yes. So you know, another example. Um, huh. We have a videographer and a photographer going to be there, mm -hmm. and they have different itineraries. And usually, it's a headache to brief them and guide them around and so on. This time. I could look at the whole schedule and I say, okay, oh, for the videographer, only two per hour. Which two am I going to choose? I could tell instantly which two. Check them all off. Plink. Email them to him, and he knows what to do. Excellent. No. Yeah, that's great. Uh, and you know, there's something uh, else that's it's not quite new. We've had poetry before, but I was interested, um, just personally, in. Uh, the depth of the uh, poetry yes, we, that we, we have really this year. We're big focus this year. Uh, yeah. And um, uh, tell, uh, talk a little bit more about Mr. Zapruder, yes. who's written a book called Why Poetry? Yes. Well, uh, he's Matthew Zapruder. Uh, he's actually the son of the, the Kennedy assassination Zapruder, but that's not why he's a poet. Or yeah. maybe it is why yeah, he's a poet. <laughs> uh, but he wrote a book called Why Poetry? and, and uh, it's, uh, it's on the question of why does poetry need to be inaccessible? Because I think a lot of people are put off by it, myself included. 
when you see a you're just poem reading the by wrong somebody poets. famous in the I'll, New I'll York. give you a list. Yeah. Uh, no, you, you see somebody by some very famous, something by something very famous poet in the New Yorker, and you read it, and you read it, and you read it, and you cannot, uh, I cannot make him understand why, and I give up. Uh, but, but the point is that there are many different kinds of poetry. You know? So we have a poet here, Ron Courtge, I think his name is, who Billy Collins says is the, is the funniest poet in that, and he's extraordinarily And Billy Collins excited. is he knows. terrific. I, I, have, no. I have every book he wrote. Yes. So, so uh, that's a great endorsement. Uh, we have uh, another poet, Margot Berdyshevsky, who used to live on Maui, uh, who I find totally inaccessible. But uh, she's gotten quite famous and got all sorts mm -hmm. of prizes and is, and, uh, is published uh, in, in internationally. And she's coming here from the Los Angeles Festival of Books, which was this past weekend. Right. You know? uh, and then there are several local poets. You know? Roger, you and I are, are book people, so yeah. that's what we're talking about. But we should also, actually, we should do a couple of things. Um, I started with a festival of, of first in the context of uh, doing your advertising. So I think it's very important at some point in this, in this interview that you or I say, first, that the Hawaii Book and Music Festival is entirely free, yes, no admission, and it has entirely free parking. Uh, on the grounds of Honolulu Holly, and that it occurs uh, Saturday and Sunday, May 5th and 6th. I just wanted to make sure we got that out. The other thing we should now spend about half our time talking about, or at least a good portion of it, is the music, because uh, we've well, been talking we're about We're going to take a break, and we'll come back to the music, because we've got we'll a lot that. to we'll talk do about that. there. Okay. Thank you very much. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. You can be the greatest, you can be the best You can be the king, come banging on your chest You can beat the world, you can beat the war You could talk to God, go banging on his door You can throw your hands up, you can beat the clock You can move a mountain, you can break rocks You can be a master, don't wait for luck Dedicate yourself and you can find yourself And uh, just to repeat what we said just now, <laughs> it's, the festival right. takes place on May the 5th and 6th from 10 to 5 and on the grounds of Honolulu Hale. Uh, and this parking is free in the underground municipal garages right next door. Get there early because they do run out of room. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's going to be terrific. And I, I <clears> also <throat> just want to underline, because yeah. I think it's really remarkable, uh, the value uh, that you get for, it's free, it doesn't cost anything. Yeah. And um, you've got literally world famous authors, uh, you've got incredible local authors, yeah. uh, you've got incredible local musicians and halal, and including this year, uh, a free concert by Jake Shimabukuro, mm -hmm. which, which is all by itself is an enormous value. Enormous, yes. Yeah. Uh, and, and all this is free. The, the concert is uh, 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 three to five. It's the first hour is the Pandanus Club, uh, which is Ken Makuakane's group. Uh, by the way, Ken Makuakane has just been elected Kahu of Kawaiahau. You know, he's a huh. very has it, all sorts of um, arrows to his bow or strings to his bow. Uh, and the second one is Jake Shimabukuro, uh, which should be terrific. You know, uh, and that's from four to five o'clock. On the main stage, we have four major halal. Uh, we have Jeff Peterson. Uh, we have Ian O'Sullivan, a younger uh, slack key guitarist for, who teaches at Kamehameha. We have a singer-songwriter competition. We have a, a military band this time, 
<coughs> the Banzai Brass Quintet. Will the Banzai Brass, Brass Quintet. Quintet, which right. will kick off the festival at 10 o'clock on Saturday. Oh, that'll be an eye the Royal opener. Hawaiian Band will kick it off on Sunday morning. No. Very good. So uh, there's a lot of music uh, going on. Yeah. No. Uh, and Halau as well. The Halau, yes. Uh, the uh, particularly uh, famous one is Mapuana de Silvas. Uh, mm -hmm. She brings in probably 50 dancers. Uh, another big dance event is Willow Chang is bringing about six different exotic dancers, uh, world dance. So there's a lot going on on that stage. Um, the music and the halal are, are of course uh, mainly Hawaiian and the festival has always had a, uh, a dedicated Hawaiian culture venue. We probably do more Hawaiian culture in depth for a general audience than anyone, and that's because of the immersion programs that produce a steady stream of young scholars who produce books that not that many people are going to read as, as, as books, but, but we surround them with panels. The, uh, the, the one that especially interested me in that, in that particular program yeah. was uh, Okay and Nogelmeyer and mm -hmm. um, I forget the other Aaron person. Salah. Aaron Salah uh, are going to talk about translating the movie Moana, Moana yes. into Hawaiian. Yes. And that should just be fascinating, yes, uh, be. the issues that they had to deal with in taking this Disney film uh, and making it in, in the Hawaiian language, a Disney film which had Hawaiian characters to begin with. It's it, all kinds of interesting That's an example of how, how the selection of these events can be quite serendipitous. I happen to be watching the Merry Monarch Festival on TV, and uh, uh, Aaron Salah was interviewed about that by somebody on, on, uh, on a TV station, and I called him up immediately and said, come on over. <coughs> yeah. No. no. Uh, so uh, uh, we also have a food cookbook, a really very mm -hmm. different food uh, venue. Uh, we've all heard of the Food and Wine Festival, where you pay, I don't know, two, three hundred dollars just to go through the door. Uh, but there's another strand of food in Hawaii that's very different, it's local, it's uh, uh, farm to table. Uh, the people who put it together is the Pili group and they mm -hmm. did a terrific job last year and they're going to do one again. It's backed by Ulupono Initiative so that gives you a sense of, of what the programming is. Um, uh, Amanda Corby noticed that in schools kids did not know anything about food, about how where it comes from or how it's cooked. So it's part of her mission is to teach kids uh, mm -hmm. about local food and so uh, we're doing that and we actually have a farm stand next to that venue. Oh, that'll be fun, yeah. yeah. No, no. Um, and uh, let's see, what else do we have? We have, um, we've gone through the health. Uh, we have a book swap. That's the most oh, popular that's venue the most popular. of all. The, lines, yeah. the line for that begins before the festival begins. For an hour uh, before. For an hour yes. before, yes. It, it snakes down uh, King yeah. Street. You can bring you get free books. five gently used books and exchange them for five new books. Usually popular. No. Uh, so that that's a that's a, a wonderful. And you're having a a playwrights jam again this yes. year. And I mentioned two, that two of them. Two of them because yeah. I was I was in one a few yeah. years ago, yeah. which was a lot of this a is, lot of fun. This is where uh, three or four playwrights each time uh, uh, perform their own play or excerpts from their plays. You know. So that's in the Storytellers Pavilion, where we have uh, storytellers. These are not storytellers for, for children. These are adult. Um, right. Story to yeah. us. Uh, Jeff Gear is a mainstay of that, um, and uh, uh, Kathy Collins from Maui has always uh, mm -hmm. always been there. That's a fun. That's a really fun uh, venue. Yeah. You know. There's a Publishers Village. Um, there are because there are booksellers. There's several booksellers this year. The biggest one, of course, is Barnes and Noble, where all the national authors do their signings. Uh, all the solo authors have signings after their events. Uh, that's a very popular. Right. Uh, yeah, you can uh, buy a book, buy a Pulitzer Prize winner, and actually get it signed by that author. And talk to him. And talk to that yeah, author, yeah. Uh, Pulitzer Prize winner or National Book Award winner, or both. And you will immediately at least double or triple the value of the book that you bought. <laughs> <laughs> We have a couple of uh, uh, prizes that we're, we're, we're giving away. For, uh, it's open to everyone. One, two Nook glow lights that have been 
given um, the hundred dollar they're worth a hundred dollars each uh, given by Barnes and Noble uh, we've introduced uh, uh, we have a, a, a an Ohana a book and music Ohana which yes, actually was, you invented yeah uh, the book and music Ohana which uh, which is known which as which the acronym stands is BAMO and and it's BAMO has got a big BAM coming this year. Yeah. It's it's changed and it's going to be something that will be hopefully very popular because uh, the uh, BAMO organization, the Ohana, benefits the Hawaii Book and Music Festival. But we, this year we've managed to put together something so that the BAMO Ohana will actually benefit the members um, and benefit them very significantly yes. because uh, this time with your uh, basic membership, you'll get a little plastic card you can carry about in your wallet. And it will has give a barcode on the back. has a barcode. And different uh, vendors all over Hawaii will be recognizing this. There's a, a, a list of them, uh, I believe it's on the website, yes. and also on the printed uh, program when you come to the festival. And there are literally well, more than dozens and dozens. There must be a hundred or more. At least, at least, uh, yeah. And um, it'll get you things like discounts on coffee or a free scone when you buy a cup of coffee. and. There are a lot of restaurants. All kinds of yeah. restaurants yes, will be yeah. honoring this. You know, when I was uh, writing the copy for that and, and looking at the at their website, it's it's, it's uh, done by a company called Do, DG Now. DG Now. Dot, dot org, Do Good Now. And they're doing this nationally. It's a really brilliant yeah. idea. So it's, it's a very tight, professionally put yeah, together yes, program. Yeah. Frankly, it's something beyond our capacity uh, if it hadn't been that this is something yes. that uh, you can access because it's been developed yeah. uh, for other organizations yeah. and it's it's been used by many organizations but um, you can get this uh, for one donation basic membership to BAMO $30 yes. for $30 yeah. you can rapidly get the value of that back very quickly yeah. with just a couple of nights out at the restaurant so yeah. that you might be going to anyway in all likelihood yeah. uh, as I was saying he, as, as I was writing copy for it and I looked on their website to see who what what the, where the benefits were, it was creating new benefits as I, as I was looking at it. And, yeah. and this will happen through the year. And it'll get That's right, the card is good for the entire year. Yes, yes. So uh, it, it's not just for, for the weekend of the festival, it's for 365 days, so it's a terrific value. Okay, we have just a minute left, so minute left. repeat again where it is. The Hawaii Book and Music Festival, the 13th year. Congratulations, Roger, for putting it together for all those years, really. And uh, May 5th and 6th, May 5th and 6th, on the grounds of Honolulu Holly, the Hawaii Book and Music Festival, free admission and free parking. Really don't miss it. I think it's the best one all that we've had for 13 years. And if that sounds familiar, it's because you've heard the public service announcement, the PSA, which is narrated and written by Richard. Yeah. That is true, <laughs> but it's really good. Don't miss it. <laughs>